أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه أن آتاه الله الملك الآية صدق الله العظيم We praise and thank Allah عز وجل for guiding us to the deen of Islam We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for taking us, or protecting us rather, from falsehood and misguidance, and bringing us to the path of guidance and hidayah. It is only by the mercy and compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that anyone receives guidance. The guidance of Islam, the guidance to believe in one Allah, It is not something that we inherit. It is not something that we can purchase. It is not something that someone can give us as a gift. We do not achieve it based on our social standards, our economical prosperity, our good relationship with someone. But Iman and belief in Allah Azza wa Jal is a divine blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's sitting beside his uncle, the person who supported him when his parents died. He brought him up, but he never accepted the kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's sitting beside his bed as he's on his deathbed, and our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is imploring his uncle that, Oh, my beloved uncle, say the words, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. I will stand as a guarantee. I will argue in your defense on the day of Qiyamah. Eventually, his uncle passes away, and the Prophet وسلم, is heartbroken that he loved him so much in this world. He cared for him so much in this world. But Allah did not allow him to leave this world and enter the hereafter. A believer in the kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is heartbroken. Allah azza wa jal explains to him. In that moment, Allah explains to him, Innaka la tahdi man ahbab. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do not guide whomsoever you wish. It is the desire of Allah who receives guidance. Only Allah can give guidance. So let us not take it for granted that we are seated here obeying the command of Allah azza wa jal, reciters of the kalima, la ilaha illallah, believing in one Allah, following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are not simple gifts and achievements. These are not things to be taken lightly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected our souls and made us believers. Allah gave us the title Muslims. وَسَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ in the Quran. Allah gave us the title Muslims. People who will submit their lives to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We now have to maintain a life that is matching or that is similar to the title that we've been given. 
We're Muslims. But our lives is our life is a life of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we put our desires secondary to the to the wishes and command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are the questions we should be asking. This is how we determine whether we have truly committed and practiced Islam. At this time of the year, we study the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We look at the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made the ultimate sacrifice. He made the ultimate submission. But Allah azza wa jal used the same term. أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When him, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, when they submitted themselves, the act of Islam was practiced. When they made Islam before Allah azza wa jal, and he turned his son on his forehead as he was about to sacrifice him. That is Islam. He's a father. He's sacrificing his own son on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, this is Islam. When a father is willing to sacrifice his own son to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is submission. That is the Islam that we all claim to have. Ibrahim alayhi salam, of the many things that he taught us, he taught us to be a genuine person. He taught us to be a genuine believer in Allah azza wa jal. Not to fake it, not to pretend, not to dress the part and speak the part, but he acted the part. Ibrahim alayhi salam taught us the true meaning of tawakkul, that he spoke the truth. He spoke the truth in the face of tyranny. And when the, ch the challenge came, speaking is easy. But when the retaliation came, did he abandon his claim? Did he run away and turn away and see? And, and side with the disbelievers. He was one man against an entire community. He preached Islam to them over and over. Believe in one Allah. Stop worshiping idols. His own father turned against him. But he was genuine in his claim. Unfortunately, Muslims of today, it's all about the show. It's all about the presentation. The outward aspect of our deen. What the next Muslim thinks about us. How often do we wonder when we go to our beds at night, what have I done sincerely to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am, am I truly submitting myself, my desires to, to obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't run away when the challenge came. When the tough, when the tough moments came, he stood against an entire community. As if that wasn't enough, they, they tied him together with ropes. They tied his arms and legs together and cast him into the fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam is still not worried. His only words are, Hasbuna Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. He taught us the true meaning of tawakkul, that when we are faced with difficulty, we don't claim that we turn to Allah but in our hearts we have doubt whether Allah will actually answer our prayers. But we come to the masjid in a time of need, but it's economic need, personal tragedy, social issues in our household. Ibrahim alayhi salam in the time of difficulty, he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught us the meaning of tawakkul. When we come to the masjid at that moment of difficulty, we have to fully understand that I'm turning and I'm letting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be a, let, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala share or let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know my grief and my sorrow. And we have trust and hope that Allah will answer our prayers. He wasn't worried. They're about to cast him into the fire. And he says, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and he's an excellent guardian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the nature of fire. This is what happens when we have tawakkul. If we develop a similar level of tawakkul, where we put our trust in Allah, 
that Allah told me to stay away from haram and I'll be successful. To establish my salah and I will be saved from poverty. To recite the Quran and blessings will come into my home. Today we do everything to fix our problems except look to the teachings of Islam. How often have we fixed our problems by reciting Surah Al-Baqarah and two rakats of salah? Our Prophet wasallam taught us, he said the, the, it was his habit that whenever difficulty came to his way, he would stop immediately and he would go and perform two rakats of salah. How often do we do this? This is tawakkul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understood that Ibrahim salam was sincere in his tawakkul. He put his trust fully in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him with. Allah azza wa jal changed the nature of fire from being something that burns and causes harm. For Ibrahim alayhi salam, the fire itself was commanded, Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, become cool and peaceful for Ibrahim alayhi salam. The scholars explain that if Allah simply said, become cool, the fire would have become cold and harmful to Ibrahim alayhi salam. But this fire was cool and peaceful. It was a moderate temperature. It comes in some narrations of the, the incident of Ibrahim alayhi salam that he spent 40 days in the fire. And when they were tired of trying to destroy him, he walked out to the fire unharmed. He understood the meaning of tawakkul. Again, for Ibrahim alayhi salam, it wasn't about presenting himself in a certain way. What mattered was his relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. His trust in Allah was real. His submission to Allah was real. His Iman was real. He wasn't worried about the opinion of the next person. His concern was my connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. Our community as Muslims today, we worry too much about what other people think about us. And very little do we concern ourselves or do we worry about our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal? We're satisfied if we don't perform our salah, if we don't give zakah and we don't pass in the month of Ramadan, and we're constantly involved in interest in haram, as long as people think we're a good person. Ibrahim alayhi salam taught us what really matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the natural order of things to protect Ibrahim alayhi salam. Eventually he leaves that group of people, that community. His own father he leaves and walks away. After many years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a child, Ismail alayhi salam. Comes in some narrations of Ibn Kathir, that he was about 120 years old when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his, the child Ismail alayhi salam. So after waiting that long to have a child, the child is born. Allah azza wa jal tests him again. Understand his frame of mind. He didn't have a child. Finally, he gets that child that he wants so bad. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him, to take the child and the wife, that, you, that newborn child and your wife, and leave them in the desert. Allah commands him where to go. He goes to the place. It's a valley. Ibrahim salam leaves his family there, turns away. He's a human being like each and every one of us. His heart is heavy with grief, sorrow and sadness. But none of this, none of this can overcome his desire to obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, wa la awladukum an zikrillah. O you who believe, do not allow your wealth and your families, your children, to take you away from the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal. O you who believe, do not allow your family and your wealth to take you away from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a command. 
The scholars explain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singled out wealth and family because very often in pursuit of happiness of these two things, in pursuit of economical prosperity or a happy family, we very often trample upon the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it's the business deals that we're doing with interest or the haram company that we're working for, we very often trample upon Allah's commands to achieve these things. When it comes to our families, very often we test it. It comes down to the pleasure and the happiness of our families or the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the weddings and the janazah. These are two common examples of when good people break the rule of Allah Azza wa Jal in an effort to please family members. Allah, Allah gave us His instruction, warnings, advice, so that we can know what is to come. Let us take a lesson from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at his sacrifice. He was commanded to separate from his family, not by living in another state, leaving them not in a place where there was food nor water. He was commanded to leave his family there. He looked at the place and he turns away and he turns to Allah Azza wa Jal. He turns in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah records the dua in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibrahim alayhi salam is speaking. Rabbi inni askantu min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, I have left my family. Biwadin ghayri zi zar'in. He described this, the, the place where he left them. In a valley that doesn't have a single blade of grass. Think for a moment, when we leave our homes in the morning, when it's a job we're going to, whatever moment we spend away from our families, each and every person who has someone that they love, when they separate from that person, the number one concern on their minds is the well-being and safety of that individual. How would that person, what would I do to protect that person if some harm should come to them when I'm not there? This is always the number one concern. What if someone attacks them? What if someone causes harm to them? Think about our families as we leave to go in the morning to our jobs. It is always our concern. Now that intensified. We left them in our homes. Ibrahim is leaving his family in a barren desert. But we can relate to this. Look at the reaction of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We're taking lessons from his life. He turns to Allah Azza wa Jal. Inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. Oh Allah, I have left my family in that valley, in that desert. He then asked Allah to bless them with something. If we had to ask Allah to, protect, to give our families one thing when we're not there, many of us would ask for a security guard, stronger locks, some weapons to protect themselves. Whatever it is, we would be worried about the safety and well-being of our families. Look at what Ibrahim salam asked Allah for. Rabbana liyuqibu salat. Oh Allah, let them establish salat. Rabbana liyuqibu salat. That was his first request to Allah. O oh Allah, let my family establish prayer. Why? Because he understood that he couldn't be there to protect them. But if they turn to Allah Azza wa Jal and they pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and they establish a connection, a relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, they understood that they had to serve Allah, then they would be under the protection of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. When we leave our homes, if we taught our families to get up in the morning, sacrifice that hour of sleep or that five minutes of sleep, and perform Fajr Salah, 
Then as the Prophet ﷺ told us, when that person establishes Fajr Salah in the morning, they enter into the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> if we teach our families to sacrifice their desire for sleep and that luxury and comfort of sleeping, to perform their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have placed them in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that protection would stay with them wherever they go. As long as they remain dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't ask for food or shelter. He didn't ask Allah to send people there for them. Later on he asked Allah for this. But his first request to Allah was, Oh Allah, I have left my family alone. Let them pray to you. Let them pray to you. He understood the importance of his family establishing salah. Today the average youth doesn't perform salah. Salah is an absent aspect of the life of a young person. These things should worry us. These things should concern us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places us in this world. And we have a duty to serve Him. When we don't fulfill that duty to serve, of serving Allah Azza wa Jal, then we no longer have, Allah no longer has a responsibility towards us. Ibrahim alayhi salam taught his family the importance of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the results. Allah protected them. Allah provided for them from an unknown source. Allah made that city a place where people come from every corner of the globe on the dua of Ibrahim salam. This was part of his dua. Oh Allah, let people come towards them. On that dua, millions of people descend upon that city every day. He was sincere. He understood the true teachings of Islam, what it meant to submit before Allah, what it meant to put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to develop this within us. We can no longer carry on as if nothing is wrong. The salah is missing, the zakah is negligent, the fasting is sometimes on and off, but we're not worried. If we take in lessons from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, then let us take lesson in being, let us take that lesson of being a genuine person. That when we sleep at night, we can rest peacefully knowing that I have submitted and I have sacrificed my desires to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My family doesn't disobey Allah by consuming haram and listening to music and dressing inappropriately. I sacrifice their wishes or their desires to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we celebrate the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, let us take these pertinent lessons which can be very valuable to us if we implement them in our lives. Let us teach our families the importance of establishing salah. For if they establish that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and keep us away from that which is evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire us to take lessons from the wonderful life of Ibrahim alayhi salam and let us become as genuine as a Muslim, as a believer that he was. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa al muslimin fastaghfiru innahu huwa al ghafur al rahim. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيموا الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر